For more than 5,000 years of rich history, silkworms have quietly spun shimmering threads, not only a precious heritage of Eastern culture, but also the heart of the multi-billion dollar luxury silk industry. But have you ever wondered how billions of silkworms are raised, harvested, and transformed into the finest fabrics in the world? This journey begins at specialized farms where silkworms are carefully nurtured under strictly controlled temperature and humidity, enjoying fresh mulberry leaves every single day. From there, they are brought to modern reeling factories where cocoons are sorted, processed, and transformed into glistening threads woven into luxurious silks as valuable as gold. Today, let's join Radiant Farming to explore the fascinating world of silkworm farming and the refined art of silk production. Silkworm rearing and silk production today represent a spectacular revolution far beyond the traditional methods thousands of years old. This innovation has opened the era of industrialization in silkworm breeding and processing on a massive scale in countries such as India, Japan, Thailand, Uzbekistan, Vietnam, and especially China, which accounts for nearly 80% of the world's raw silk output, equivalent to almost 60,000 tons every year. This is a journey that connects tradition and modernity, where technology elevates heritage. Though their tiny appearance may cause hesitation or even fear, silkworms are true artists that create treasures as precious as gold. Farms spanning tens of thousands of square meters continuously expand raising billions of silkworms. So, what is it about silk that has mesmerized humanity for millennia? The thread of the Bombyx mori silkworm, light as air, stronger than steel by weight, is nature's masterpiece with a unique protein structure of a solid fibrin core wrapped in a protective layer of Saracen. This perfect combination brings durability, softness, and natural luster, something modern technology has still not been able to recreate artificially. As a timeless symbol of elegance, silk bridges Eastern and Western culture, bearing deep historical and artistic value, celebrated in fashion collections worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, from luxury houses such as Hermes, Dior, Valentino, and Elie Saab. The journey of silk begins with tiny eggs, smaller than a speck of dust, if left unharvested, after about nine to 10 days from cocooning, the pupae inside carefully selected cocoons transform into moths ready to reproduce within just two to four hours. Silkworms are extremely sensitive, requiring quiet surroundings, soft light, and individual mesh trays for perfect results. Through thousands of years of domestication, Silk moths have lost the ability to fly, their wings have shrunk, their chest muscles weakened, and their bodies grown heavier. It is a design by humans, so silkworms can spend their entire lives producing silk. Within the next 24 to 48 hours, each female moth lays continuously 300 to 500 eggs. These tiny eggs gradually change color from pale yellow to gray, 
a clear sign of successful fertilization. The eggs are carefully collected and stored in cold storage. Only the highest quality eggs are incubated under ideal conditions, 24 to 28 degrees Celsius, with humidity at 80 to 85 percent, to stimulate hatching. After 10 days of waiting, tiny larvae emerge, beginning a journey both fragile and extraordinary. At the initial rearing stage, 1,500 to 2,000 silkworm larvae are raised per square meter in flat trays, where they adapt to their new environment for four to five days. During this stage, the larvae are fed with nutrient-rich mulberry leaf cakes. They eat non-stop, growing rapidly every single day. Astonishingly, during the larval stage, a silkworm can consume up to 50,000 times its body weight. This requires an enormous demand for mulberry leaves, driving farmers to cultivate thousands of hectares of mulberry plantations, creating a sustainable ecosystem that supports sericulture. To keep up with growth, silkworms undergo two molting cycles at this stage, each a few days apart. This essential process allows their skin to shed and expand, preparing them for the rapid growth ahead. After completing these crucial early stages, the next 25 days bring intensive care as the worms mature. Every morning, farmers harvest fresh mulberry leaves, especially those from the middle and lower parts of branches, where nutrients are best suited for silkworms. Interestingly, silkworms never drink water throughout their lives. Therefore, ensuring mulberry leaves are completely dry before feeding is essential. If leaves are wet with dew or moisture, it can cause bloating, disease, or even mass death. Feeding silkworms now becomes a race against time as the hunger of billions of worms soars. In modern farms, silkworms are raised on wide, airy platforms, ensuring optimal growth. Instead of finely chopped young leaves, as in the early stage, now they require larger, mature mulberry leaves to meet rising demand. They are fed five to six times a day, leaves spread evenly to ensure balanced distribution, boosting efficiency and reducing stress and overcrowding. An essential factor at this stage is the use of lime powder to disinfect the environment, kill harmful bacteria and fungi, reduce disease risks, and maintain balanced pH levels. During the final feeding stage, Lasting about 10 to 12 days, silkworms undergo two more molts to match their rapid growth from 1 8 inch to 3.5 inches in size. At this stage, feeding is no longer simple. It requires precision at every feeding time, all in preparation for spinning their precious cocoons. When silkworms show signs of reduced appetite and transparent abdomens, farmers rely on their experience to lower racks of straw, bamboo, or wooden frames closer to the ground. These simple yet effective tools provide safe, stable homes for silkworms to spin cocoons. From there, in billions of tiny chambers, the gentle worms instinctively settle into the central frame, ready to spin. Thanks to their sophisticated silk glands, they weave by moving their heads in a figure eight pattern, producing thousands of loops of filament over 1,000 meters long in just two to three days. 
Each cocoon is both a safe shelter and a precious treasure for the silk industry. Each farm can harvest millions of cocoons in a single season, a truly impressive sight. So, what really happens inside the mysterious cocoon? In seven to 10 days after completing the cocoon, the silkworm lies still and silently transforms into a pupa, a vital metamorphosis preparing for the next stage of its extraordinary life cycle. For farmers, it is also the reward for days of hard work and patient waiting. Tens of thousands of cocoons are now ready for harvest. In the past, cocoons were harvested entirely by hand. Farmers skillfully picked each cocoon from the frames with their fingers. Although simple and low cost, this manual method was extremely time consuming, especially when handling tens of thousands of cocoons per batch. Therefore, for large scale farms, the need for higher efficiency and less labor led to the development of modern machinery. Today, semi-automatic or fully automated cocoon harvesters are widely used, increasing harvesting speed by five to 10 times compared to manual work, reducing losses, and ensuring consistent cocoon quality. This is a crucial step in modernizing the silk industry, expanding its reach to global markets. When thousands of tons of cocoons arrive at factories, the transformation into silk begins with sorting. Skilled workers carefully examine each cocoon, selecting based on size, weight, uniformity, and shell thickness. Only the finest cocoons are chosen for high-quality silk, ensuring the final product meets the highest standards of texture. Next comes a critical step to prevent pupae from emerging and breaking the cocoons. This is done by exposing the cocoons to high heat through steaming, hot air drying, or boiling in hot water. This not only halts all life activity inside, but also sterilizes the cocoon and preserves the silk structure, ensuring longer shelf life and superior fiber quality. But that alone is not enough to soften saracen the natural protein that binds fibers together. So, after pupae are removed, cocoons are gently warmed in hot water, about 60 to 90 degrees Celsius. Now, the heart of the process begins to beat. As softened cocoons enter the enchanting stage of reeling. Before modern machinery, reeling silk was an art demanding dexterity. Experienced farmers carried out this meticulous work to produce the highest quality threads. Today, softened cocoons are placed into industrial reeling machines. With rotating brushes in warm water, not only is the outer saracen loosened, but the delicate filament end is found. Workers quickly and gently guide it into the reeling machine. From there, shimmering strands flow like liquid silver, each thread formed by combining filaments from five to 10 cocoons wound evenly onto reels. During this process, the thread is checked for defects such as knots, which can interfere with dyeing or weaving. If a knot is found, the machine stops and alerts the worker, who removes the knot and rejoins the thread. Thread thickness is monitored by sensors. If it becomes too thin, a new cocoon is automatically added to maintain consistency. A single silk filament is only about 10 micrometers in diameter, thinner than human hair, yet with tensile strength comparable to steel by weight. Though one cocoon can yield up to 1,000 meters of filament, it takes 2,500 to 3,000 cocoons 
to produce just half a kilogram of raw silk, a testament to the rarity behind the world's finest silks. Once reeled, the raw silk enters a new journey, twisting. Here, multiple filaments are gently twisted together, making them stronger, more uniform, and ready for weaving. In this delicate stage, artisans can also blend different silks, creating diverse textures, thicknesses, or subtle variations in color and shine. Unlike wool or alpaca, which require tight twists due to short, fragile fibers, silk filaments are long, fine, and lustrous, needing only the lightest twist to preserve their drape, softness, and glow. This balance gives each strand a soul, shaping not only the texture, but also the elegance and emotion of the final fabric. Yet, to unlock its true potential, the twisted silk must undergo a special transformation, degumming. The twisted skeins are soaked in warm water mixed with a mild alkaline solution. As Saracen dissolves, what remains is silk in its purest form, lighter, softer, and unbelievably smooth. In this moment, silk seems to awaken, no longer raw fiber, but a living material ready to shine. Before reaching the loom, the silk undergoes one more step, dyeing. This is when artisans breathe life into every strand. Each skein is immersed for four to six hours in dye baths, where natural pigments from indigo, pomegranate rind, redwood, or sapin roots penetrate deeply into the fiber. This traditional dyeing technique lays the foundation for complex patterns such as eye cut or brocade. Meanwhile, for solid colored silks or hand-painted fabrics, the entire cloth is dyed after weaving, creating flowing layers of color, soft and fluid like water. And finally, silk reaches its last stage, weaving. Whether on traditional wooden looms or modern industrial machines, this is always a breathtaking performance. Thousands of threads move in rhythm, interlacing, curving, and flowing to become shimmering silk fabrics. Each piece is not just material, but a living work of art, carrying the essence of nature and human craftsmanship, ready to become clothing, artwork, or a unique handcrafted masterpiece. Thank you for joining us on this mesmerizing journey into the magical world of silk. Stay with us to discover more fascinating stories about agriculture and craftsmanship. Goodbye, and see you next time.